Hi everyone, I'm Celeste. Welcome to my booktube channel. And today I am so happy to share with you some of my most anticipated reads for 2024. Now I have a lot of reads for 2024 on my TBR list. I'm not going to cover all of them today. Um, I have uh, mystery books, I have modern literature, I have nonfiction history. Um, so I have lots of titles on my TBR, but today specifically I wanted to share with you uh, books that are cozy, books that are vintage, uh, classic books, and also some children's books. So without further ado, let's get to it. A few months ago, um, Kate Howe on her channel presented a video with a seasonal bookshelf challenge, and it looked really fun and really easy and doable. Um, she's got like just a little mini challenge with a very general theme for each month of the year. And for May, the theme happens to be animals. So I've been very excitedly planning out a number of books with animals as the focus for the month of May. Um, and one of those is one I've never actually read before. Um, and that is Paul Gallico's Thomasina. And isn't this just a beautiful, beautiful copy? This is a hardcover vintage edition that I was able to locate. Now I remember when I was a little girl watching the Disney version of Thomasina, uh, which came out in I believe 1963. And I remember watching that with my sister and brothers, but I don't remember the book and I don't think I've ever read the book. I've heard that it's kind of strange and I think that different people respond to it in different ways. It's one of those books that you either love and think is really special or you think it's kind of strange. Um, and I'll just read you the premise of it here. So I'll just put down the book for a moment. Um, okay, so Thomasina is about um, Andrew McDowell, a widowed veterinary surgeon working in fictional Invernock, Scotland in 1912. So he's a veterinarian. He lives in Scotland. It's 1912. And he has a young daughter named Mary, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, Rod, who is attached to her pet ginger cat, Thomasina. And Thomasina actually narrates some of the story. Um, Although Mary loves Thomasina, her father, McDoy, only tolerates the cat. I don't know if it's McDoy, it's M-A-C-D-H-U-I. So is that McDo? only tolerates the cat. His wife died young, and while he had desired to be a medical doctor to save humans, his overbearing father forced him to be a vet like himself. The village children talk of a local witch named Lori, who's said to cure ailing animals through magic. After McDoo refuses to help an injured frog, the boy takes the frog to Lori and leaves it for her to heal. So it's supposed to be a story about love and the importance of love and redemption. And um, it's supposed to be very special and very strange. Um, so it intrigued me. I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't know if it's good, but I do know that the movie version was very special, uh, starring Patrick McGowan. Um, and so I'm looking forward to trying uh, Thomasina as one of the animal themed books that I read in May. And I would love to invite any of you guys, if you're interested in doing kind of a silent read along or a buddy read on this one, just let me know. Um, you know, I can't guarantee anything, but I think it will be fun. There's also a very affordable copy of this um, on available for sale as a paperback, like on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all of that. So um, yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in reading along with Thomasina. 
So next up, I have a number of classics that I'm interested in reading. And the first will be for Jane Austen July. And this year I'm going to be reading Sense and Sensibility. And it, this is the first novel that was written by Jane Austen in 1811. And it's about the Dashwood sisters. And there is Eleanor Dashwood and Marianne Dashwood. They have a change of fortune. And so they, this book follows the Dashwood sisters and their mother when they're forced to leave the family estate at Norland Park and move to a place called Barton Cottage, where they experience love, romance, and heartbreak. So I'll be looking forward to reading this as one of my classics for 2024, and I'll be reading this in July. And then I'll also be reading... The Blank Wall by Elizabeth Sangsi Holding, and this is a Persephone uh, classic. So The Blank Wall was published in 1947. It's supposed to be a psychological thriller. Elizabeth Sangsi Holding was a American novelist, and um, this is the story of Lucia Holly, who is a suburban housewife and mother. She's been harassed by wartime domestic problems. Her husband is away at war, and uh, she has a tendency to be insecure and feels sometimes like she can't handle everything on her own while he's away. Uh, but she is forced to when she finds herself implicated in the murder of her daughter's extremely unattractive beau. This is supposed to be a real page turner and it just sounded really fun to me as a book to read in 2024. I know that Raymond Chandler, the author at Raymond Chandler, was a real fan of Elizabeth Sanksy Holden holding and uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. She's considered the godmother of noir. Um, so yeah I haven't read a Persephone classic in a while so I'm going to be reading The Blank Wall. Another classic that I'm really looking forward to is Cranford and Cousin Phyllis by Elizabeth Gaskell. Now in 2023 for Victober I thoroughly enjoyed um, Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South. It was stupendous. I was blown away by it. And so I'm really excited to read some more Gaskell. I, this may not be the only Gaskell that I read. I may also read uh, Ruth or uh, Wives and Daughters. We'll see what I have time for. But definitely I want to get Cranford in there. I so enjoy the television uh, series Cranford. I know that the book is more of a series of vignettes. It's not all tied together nicely like the TV series is, but I'm still really looking forward to revisiting the ladies of Cranford. Additionally, I'm looking forward to a new release by the British Library Women's Writers Series, and that release date is going to be June 20th, 2024. And it is a short story collection called Stories for Summer and Days by the Pool. So here's the description for this one. Join a host of female writers in celebrating the sunshine months of the year. Grab a copy as you head off to the beach or to lie by the pool and spend time with female protagonists as they navigate life during the hot summer days and long balmy evenings. So I'm sure we're going to have an assortment of 15 or so vintage lady writers and um, I'm really looking forward to the ones that are going to have a summer theme. Uh, when it's all hot and steamy and balmy, as it says. Um, so yeah, June 20th, that one comes out, and you can pre-order that now, I believe. So yeah, looking forward to that one. And then speaking of hot and balmy, I'm also looking forward to this vintage classic this summer, and that is A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. Um, now I've heard really good things about this novel, and it is considered a classic. 
Um, I'll just read you the, the back of this. It is um, a ripping tale of budding romance and grace under pressure. Jean Paget is just 20 years old and working in Malaya when the Japanese invasion begins. When she's captured, she joins a group of other women and children whom the Japanese forced to walk for miles through the jungle, leading to the deaths of many. Due to her courageous spirit, Jean takes on the role of leader of the sorry gaggle of prisoners, most of whom were expats. While on the march, the group runs into an Australian prisoner, Joe Harmon, who helps them steal some food and is horrifically punished as a result. Jean's adventures and her bond with Joe forms the heart of this gripping and moving story. So I've never read anything by Neville Shute before, and I am really interested in um, women with grace under pressure during World War II. So um, I'll be looking forward to this one. And then sort of as ten a tangent to this read, I would also um, like to rewatch a series from a long time ago. I've been craving this, and I think that uh, late spring, early summer, maybe like June ish, will be the perfect time to do this. And that is to rewatch the series Tanko. Tanko uh, was a creation of the BBC and the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. It aired from 1981 to 1985, and it is about a group of expats. Um, they're British, Dutch, and Australian women who are taken by the Japanese as prisoners of war after the fall of Singapore in 1942 and held on an island between Singapore and Australia. The series Tanko was actually based on a true life story about a woman called Margot Turner, and she has a book, I believe it's called The Real Life Tanko, and it's her autobiography. And um, she was just really a truly unbreakable woman. Um, it, this is based upon her experiences and what she endured as a prisoner of war. And um, so there's a lot of well-known faces of actresses in Tanko, and it's just a really memorable, memorable series. It is available on YouTube, although um, I think the quality of his of it is kind of poor, it's kind of grainy, so I may search for it on DVD or something like that. But I think as a um, companion watch to reading um, A Town Like Alice, I'll be watching Tanko. And finally, I have some uh, children's books that I'm really looking forward to. Um, I had a few weeks ago talked about reading All of a Kind Family by Sydney Taylor, and Sydney Taylor is actually a woman. Um, and I will post the video down below that uh, where I uh, discussed this book. It's just a wonderful, wonderful read. And this is actually a series of books, um, and it's all about turn of the century life for a Jewish family in um, uh, New York City. And um, they're poor. And these are sort, just sort of their like daily adventures and also what life was like for young Jewish people at that time in America. Um, so yes, so there's all of a kind family downtown. So that chronologically is the next book. And then the next one after that is more all of a kind family. And so I'm going to read, be reading both of those this coming year. I believe I may be doing a buddy read with Heather um, of Water Bear Reads. So I think that All of a Kind Family Downtown may be set in the fall, but I may read it in the summer so that I can um, get to more All of a Kind Family for the buddy read with Heather. Um, but we'll see how time goes. But anyway, yes, so I'm very excited about that. 
So finally, um, I'm really looking forward to a trilogy of books, and I think I'm going to also read these in the month of May with the animal theme I've got going on uh, from Kate Howe's challenge for that. And you know I love the Mama Precious Ramatswe books from the number one ladies detective agency. Well, what I didn't know is that the author um, Alexander McCall Smith has written a number of books about um, when Precious was first starting out as a little girl and he has several books um, about her solving her very first mysteries as a schoolgirl. The first one in that series is Precious and the Monkeys. So I'm really looking forward to that one and then I'm going to order the other two as well. I don't know if I'll get to the other two. Um, there is one about meerkats. I want to say the mystery of the meerkats and then there's um, a mystery about a lion. I'm not sure what the title is but I'll post these right here so that you can see the covers. So I'm really looking forward to those as well. Um, so yeah, that is everything for today. I have so many books for 2024, it's crazy. But um, I just wanted to touch base with you and highlight some of the cozier ones, some of the classics, and some of the children's books that I'm looking forward to over the spring and summer. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what you're reading and what your plans are for the coming year in spring and summer, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.